Hey, what's up everybody? Retro Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, we are going to dive into the Retro Rager 512GB Arc OS setup for the RK2023 handheld video game console. This is supposed to be a major upgrade to the overall performance of this handheld, but it also comes with over 39,000 retro video games, plug and play, preloaded, ready to go. So can't wait to test this out. Let's dive into it and see what we've got. All right, so here we are booted up into this 512 gigabyte Samsung Arc OS build for the Pow Kitty RK 2023 handheld video game console. So we're going to take a quick tour of each of the collections in here. So all games list here, you can see we have over 39,000 retro video games included. So if we take a look inside of this collection here, we'll get a feel for the layout within. Now we'll have a text list on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you're going to see either box art or in some cases just a logo that morphs into a video preview. So each of these titles does have a video preview, which is nice. We also have a description rating system here, as well as the release date for the title. So we'll back out of this collection here and we'll continue on. So here we have our favorites collection. You can custom set this up. So you have all your favorite games in here for easy access. Over here is last played. It's gonna hold the last 50 games in here. So it's basically just a memory bank so you can easily access those. Moving on, we have Amiga here with 1,956 games, Amiga CD32, 93 games, Amstrad for 2,975 games. We have Amstrad GX4000 with 26 games. Arcade collection here has 1,835. Over here, we have 43 games. Over here with Channel F, we have 30 games. Here for Mega Duck, 25 games. Daphne has 14 games. MAME has 321 games, a Thomas Wave has 17 games, Sega Naomi has 112 games, over here we have 19 games, we have 35 games, Pokemon Mini we have 22 games, Atari 800 3243 games, over here we have 617 games, over here we have uh, 96 games, 58 games, Atari ST 2546 games, Jaguar, 56 games. Lynx, we have 83 games. Wonderswan, 110 games. Wonderswan Color, 89 games. Odyssey, 285 games. PC Engine, 290 games. PC Engine CD, 46 games. TurboGrafx, 16, 94 games. TurboGrafx CD, 42 games. Five games for Super Graphics. Famicom, 385 games. Famicom Disk System, 128 games. Super Famicom, 509. Nintendo Entertainment System, 1,479 games. Sufami from Nintendo, 15 games. Over here, 39 games. Super Nintendo, 1,004 games. MSU 1, 21 games. Nintendo 64, 322 games. Virtual Boy, 25 games. Game Boy, 834 games. Game Boy Color, 572 games. Game Boy Advance, 1,081 games. Game & Watch, 52 games. Super Game Boy, 25 games. Nintendo DS, 100 games. SG-1000, 68 games. Sega Master System, 277 games. Mega Drive, 191 games. MSUMD, 4 games. Genesis, 1040 games. Sega CD, 110 games. Sega 32X, 34 games. Sega Saturn, 65 games. Dreamcast, 175 games. Sega Dreamcast VMU, 50 games. Game Gear, 259 games. Neo Geo, 140 games. Neo Geo CD, 20 games. Neo Geo Pocket, 9 games. Neo Geo Pocket Color, 40 games. Open Bore, 128. PlayStation 1, we have 579 games, which is a massive collection for PS1. PSP, 103 games. PSP Minis, 296 games. Intellivision, 136 games. ColecoVision, 141 games. TIC80, 1031 games. Vectrex, 25 games. MSX, 635 games. MSX2, 100 games. ZX Spectrum, 4524 games. Sharp X1, 48 games. X68256 games. Commodore, we have 5879 games. 174 games. We have 36 games here. Two games here. 84 games here. 90 games here, 44 games, Doom has 9 games, Wolfenstein has 2 games, over here we have 235, 10 games, 126 games, 102 games, 9 games, 125 ports, Scum VM 19 games, 27 games, 61 games and then we have tools here and options, we can go in here, we can adjust emulators, different settings and whatnot. 
RetroArch, same deal. We can go in and adjust our RetroArch options and settings. And then we also have some collections that will go through different genres of gaming. So we have action adventure, beat em up style games. We also have Capcom 1, 2, and 3. So 1 has 29 games, 2 has 36 games, and 3 should have 6. Yeah, 6 games here. More genre games. Sega Genesis hacks, kids games, NES hacks, arcade hits, platformers, puzzle games, racing games, role playing games, shoot em up games, Super Nintendo hacks, sports games. Here we have custom collections. So this is a great way to further explore the options on this card. You can explore titles you maybe you forgot about or titles you never even heard of before. So it's just a really cool way to go in here and find some custom stuff. Now here we are back to our all games list again with over 39,000 games included on this card. So we're gonna dive into some game demos on here so we can see how the performance has actually been impacted and how it's actually kicked up the experience considerably here on the Pow Kitty RK 2023 handheld. All right, guys, big fan of what we have here on ArcOS. And I've used ArcOS in the past, but I haven't used it recently. Never used it on this particular handheld. So previously, you might have saw my video where I actually unboxed this handheld and tested it out. And for the most part, I was a fan of it. But I said that there were major setbacks with Sega Saturn to the point where none of the games on the stock card that came with this, which used Jell OS, 
were running well enough to actually enjoy the experience of Sega Saturn emulation. That all changed here with this Arc OS setup though because all of the games here that I jumped into, and I jumped into about 15 or 16 titles, didn't show them all here in this video, but of the ones that I jumped into, perfect performance, no lags, no delays, no audio cutouts, no issues whatsoever. So awesome experience here for Sega Saturn. Same could be said for PlayStation, PSP. You know, you're gonna have some snags here and there, but the performance overall was considerably better on Arc OS than on the Gel OS stock card that came with this handheld. We saw Ridge Racer 2, definitely had some lags and delays here and there uh, on the original card here with the Arc OS setup. No issues whatsoever. Really smooth gameplay. Uh, I won't say no issues whatsoever, but I'd say in a three lap race, there were maybe like two hiccups that were just a split second, not even a full second in the gameplay experience. So really a great experience here. Um, also jumped into N64. Yes, there are still going to be some titles where, you know, we just don't have enough to emulate those titles effectively. One is uh, Mario Tennis, just a really tough game to emulate. And here it still is very laggy. But we jumped into Cruise in World, which is also a really hard title for N64 to emulate, and it performed perfectly, 100% perfect. In fact, I got first place in my race testing this out. So absolutely amazing there for N64, but yes, you're going to have some titles, the more challenging titles, where it still gives you a little bit of trouble. That's not because of Arc OS. It's just, you know, we are still dealing with some limitations, but the overall performance here is drastically improved from the stock card. So to the point where I actually think that this handheld is a million times better than I did originally. I talked about in the first video that I did where I first reviewed this product that, you know, I want to be a major fan of this, but because of the setbacks with emulation's performance on certain collections, you know, I'm kind of, you know, middle of the road on this. This card right here made me a big fan because it's not only cool layout, awesome controls, really a reliable product for Pow Kitty, but we were able to get into those more advanced collections much more effectively. Not perfectly, but much better than what we had originally with that stock card. So highly recommend this. Um, it is a very clean setup, not a lot of duplicates. You know, a lot of times we see just ROM dumps, I call them, where people just, you know, anybody that's setting up these cards just literally takes a bunch of files, throws them at the wall and hopes for the best. We're not seeing that here. It's very well put together, uh, very cleaned up. Yes, there's some duplicate titles, but most times where there's duplicates, it's different versions, or it's the same title that was released on multiple uh, platforms. So you might have something that was released on Genesis as well as Super Nintendo. So cases like that, you know, I don't really, you know, count a duplicate or hold it against them because out there there's different people that want different experiences with these titles and usually you want what you grew up playing so either you were playing super nintendo or you're playing genesis and if a title is released on both you usually want to go with the one that you are most familiar with so uh, that's my take on this setup here really blown away though and most importantly it made me a bigger fan of arc os and of this handheld so even if you don't want a pre-configured uh, plug and play card like this for this device Look into ARC OS for your RK2023 handheld. It's going to drastically improve your performance and overall just give you a much better experience. So that's going to do it for today. Let me know in the comment section what you guys thought of this video. If you enjoyed the content today, please give me a thumbs up. It's a huge help to me here on YouTube. And of course, hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop for all future videos right here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.